Hello, Dr. Kelly here. Today I'm going to be discussing the Z-test within a context of hypothesis testing. At the heart of the Z-test is this question. How big of a difference is there between the sample mean and the population mean? Let's apply that question to this following word problem. We're told, Tiana randomly selects a sample of 19 people and gives them a treatment. She then evaluates the evidence regarding whether her treatment had an effect. Here is the data. The mean for a sample is 96. The mean for the population is 107 with a standard deviation of 11. Assume a normal distribution for the individual scores. Now, consider Tiana's position. She's just provided a treatment to a group of 19 people. She's hoping that that treatment had an effect, had an impact. And she might be excited to know that her sample mean didn't match the population mean of 107. I think we'd all agree that if her sample mean was 107 and the population mean was 107, we would tell her, I'm sorry, Tiana, it appears that there was no impact of your treatment. But instead, she got a 96. So there's some difference between the population mean and her sample. Does it matter how big of a difference there is? Yeah, this is a small difference. This difference that I'm showing you graphically is a larger difference. This difference between 96 and 107, as I move these two circles further apart, is even bigger. And finally, we could move the 96 very far away from the 107. Why does that matter? Because if the population mean is 107, and we randomly sample 19 people, we don't expect the mean to always be 107. We expect there to be some sampling error. As sometimes, if you have 19 people randomly selected uh, from a population where the mean is 107, that those 107, their, their mean could be uh, 106, or it might be 101, or 112, not because of any special treatment, but just because not everybody's identical. And sometimes we're gonna select some people that are higher on some particular measure and some people who are lower. So we expect to see some variability in those sample means for no other reason than just the fact that we're randomly sampling from a population where the mean is 107. If I were to take more than one sample of 19 people from this large population, sometimes the sample means would be closer to 107, sometimes they'd be further away, and it would be for no special reason other than the fact that it's happened to be randomly sampling, so it's not always gonna be perfectly the sample mean of 107. In fact, if we got to see all those possible sample means, what we'd actually have then at that point would be a, a distribution of sample means. We would know, hey, if you were to randomly sample every single possible sample of size 19, here's what you would get just due to uh, sampling error. Most of the time your sample means would be 107, but sometimes they would be a little bit less, sometimes they would be a bit more. And we'd have some framework or context to understand, you know, what's, what's typical within the range of, of sampling error. So we come back to the question asked by the Z-test. How big of a difference is there between the sample mean and the population mean? A small difference means, hey, you could easily have gotten the difference between the sample mean and the population mean just because of sampling error. Our, our sample mean doesn't stand out uh, compared to uh, similar sample means that you could get, not because of any treatment or any specific thing other than just random sampling error. The bigger the z-test, whether it's negative because it's below the population mean, or positive because the sample mean was larger than the population mean, the bigger the difference, the more confident we can be that that sample mean isn't just another example of sampling error. A really huge difference like this, and we can be fairly confident that that difference between sample mean and population mean is not just because of, of sampling error. And that's at the heart of hypothesis testing, which we'll get into more later on. So when we calculate the z-test, which I'm going to cover uh, with you at this point, when we calculate the z-test, the bigger the z-test value, the further the sample mean is from, from the population mean. And that z-test result also takes into consideration the width of this distribution of sample means. Because really you want that sample mean to be really far away within consideration of this distribution of sample means. We want that sample mean to be in the tail of this distribution of sample means, indicating that, hey, it's a low probability that you could have gotten the sample mean 
as a result of just sampling error. If the sample mean is close to the 107, then it's likely to occur because of sampling error. The further away it gets towards the tails, the lower the probability that it's a result of sampling error. Okay, so bigger z-test means that sample mean uh, is less likely to be a result of sampling error. So now we're at the plug and chug portion of discussing the z-test. Our z-test formula is sample mean minus the population mean over the quantity of the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. In this problem, we have the mean for a sample is 96. So that goes here for sample mean. The mean for the population is 107. That goes over here for population mean with a standard deviation of 11. That goes over here for standard deviation. And it's going to be divided by the square root of sample size. And we're told Tiana randomly selects a sample of 19 people. So 19 people goes here. So here's our z-test with those values plugged in. Continuing on then with the chugging, we're going to go ahead and say 96 minus 107. And that gets us a negative 11. Now we've taken care of the numerator. We'll take a look at the denominator. We're going to want to figure out what is the square root of 19. So we say 19, hit our square root button, and we get 4.3588. And we'll just go to the thousands place uh, for our calculation purposes. And when we get to our final z test, we'll round to the hundreds place because our particular z table goes to the hundreds place. So square root of 19 to the thousands place is going to be 4.35, and we round up and make that 9. Okay, so we have that in our formula. Now we'll continue to simplify our denominator. So 11 divided by that 4.359. 11 divided by 4.359. And that gets us 2.5235. Again, we'll round at the thousands place. So we'll get 2.524. Okay, so we're almost done now. Now at this point, that negative 11, that's the difference between the sample mean and the population mean. The 2.524, that's our standard error. It's much like a standard deviation, uh, but it works for that distribution of sample means. That standard error, for example, tells us that approximately 68% of our sample means will, because of uh, sampling error, occur between 104.476 and 109.524, just due to sampling error uh, and no other reason than that. Two standard errors below the mean gets us down to 101.952. Let's see, 101.952 minus 2.524. Three standard errors would get us down to 99.428. And if we keep going down, to get to 96.904, that would be one, two, three, four standard errors. So that's very unlikely to occur because of uh, sampling error. I'm drawing this and going over this with you because that's what our z-test is meant to capture, this graph, this image, this concept of how extreme is the sampling mean compared to the population mean taken into a context the width of this distribution of sample means. All of these complex thoughts captured numerically by this z-test result. So let's finish calculating our z-test uh, value here. So we have a negative 11 divided by 2.524. Divided by 2.524. And that comes out to be negative 4.35. And we'll round to the hundreds place because we're now wrapping this up. So it'll be negative 4.36. That negative 4.36 says that our sample mean is 1, 2, 3, 4.36 standard errors below the mean. So let's come back to our original question. How big of a difference is there between the sample mean and the population mean? That's what the z-test is designed to answer for us. We see that our answer is negative 4.36. We got that by plugging and chugging. What that means conceptually is that our sample mean is 1, 2, 3, 4.36 standard errors below the mean. Within the distribution of sample means that we would expect, uh, if the population mean was 107 and our standard error 
was the 2.524 is that there is indeed a significant difference between the sample mean and the population mean. At this point we can pretty much reject the idea that this sample mean is a result of sampling error within this distribution of sample means and is most likely due to the treatment of uh, Tiana's uh, intervention. Okay, so I hope that this was helpful for you in terms of how do you calculate a z-test. We went through those steps. And what does that z-test mean? Uh, and then what do we do with that z-test result? And we're going to come back and we're going to see this quite a few times in quite a few different ways so that it begins to sink in uh, more each time.